Good morning. It's 10 o'clock and it's Wednesday. Time to gather and remember who we are, who God is, and God's love and care for each one of us. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for gathering us together once again to consider your love, to consider your grace, to consider your mercy as we go through our lives. Amen. One of the things that we discover as we work in the hospital is that we meet people most every day that are encountering things that they don't know what to do with. They can't. They, things that have changed their lives, sometimes permanently, sometimes there's no going back, and they don't know what to do. They don't know where to go from here. Maybe they've lost a loved one, or maybe we've lost somebody. And we had our lives all planned out, and we knew that we were going to do this or that or the other, and suddenly everything changes. And these are points in which we are in crisis emotionally, mentally, physically. What do we do? How do we handle that? Or for many of us, how do we respond to others who are going through that crisis? In 1980, for most of you, the eruption of Mount St. Helens was a historical fact, an historical artifact that you remember, that you've read about. Uh, maybe some of you were old enough that you even saw it in the papers. For me, it's something different. I happened to live near Spokane, Washington at the time. And I remember the day very well, extremely well, because it started out as a normal day. And we had plans and we had things we were going to do. And all of us, you know, as I was wandering outside, I felt something wrong. I didn't know what it was, but something was wrong. And I didn't, it was a Sunday, so I didn't have the radio on. I didn't have anything on. Uh, the church service was done, and it was time to just sit back and relax. We didn't really watch TV much. The TV was in the basement, and we never uh, got down there much. We were, I was going to read, but something was bugging me. And I went outside, and I saw it looked like a storm was coming because a storm came, all of our storms came from the southwest. And so I saw some clouds building, but they looked strange. Short, to shorten it, the clouds got bigger and bigger and bigger. And a neighbor came by and told me what was going on, that Mount St. Helens had erupted. And I looked at the cloud that was getting bigger and bigger and darker. And I began to understand that I needed to turn on the radio. And so I went in and I turned on the radio. And what we heard was extremely scary. The whole world stopped. What I heard was there's a cloud coming an ash cloud, and it's huge. And everywhere it's going, it's dropping ash, and we don't know how long this is going to last. And then it got dark. Three o'clock in the afternoon, the street lights came on, and the ash began to drop. The radio on the radio, they said, seal up your houses. We don't know what this cloud contains, but it could be deadly. 
we did. We sealed up every all the bottoms of all the doors and everything. We put towels everywhere and got everything all sealed up as best we could. And then the ash started to drop. And it dropped like snow. It wasn't a breath of wind. It came straight down. And on the radio, they said, we don't know how long this is going to last. Be prepared, but do not leave your homes. The ash was piling up at a horrendous rate. You could watch it piling up slowly on the lawn, on the window seals, on any horizontal surface it began to pile up. And they said, we don't know how long this will be. But as I looked at it and considered the rate it was piling, we could be buried by morning. I had four kids at the time, four boys, and they were young. And so I, had them, we took care as if nothing was going on. We got them ready and then uh, uh, spent time reading to them and then put them to bed fairly early for them. And we waited and we prayed and we watched. Knowing that our world was going to be different and we didn't know what we could do. There's many cases where we encounter people who had their lives are suddenly turned upside down and they don't know where to turn. They don't know what to do and no word of hope have they heard or can they believe. We encounter them here at the hospital. And sometimes we encounter them in our own lives. We encounter them ourselves. What do we do? I know what we did, my wife and I, and as we encountered this in 1980, we sat and we prayed. Help us, Lord, through this time. You and I are sometimes put in positions where I know I am almost every day when I'm here at the hospital of encountering people who, when we go to them, they have tears or they have confusion. They don't know what's going on. Sometimes they're angry. Sometimes they're just wondering. You and I have the opportunity to remind them that this is part of life, that we all go through times where we lose control. We don't have control of what's going to happen next. And we honestly have to trust that God is there. I'm going to read to you from a psalm that is one of my favorite. Psalm 46, it goes like this. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with tumult. There is a stream that makes glad the city of God, a habitation of the Most High, and God is in it, and he shall not be moved. Come, behold the works of the Lord, 
See what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow. He shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. But be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Even in the midst of those times when we don't know, when we're lost, when there is nothing we can turn to, nothing we know is the same. That's the time we need to turn and remember that God is the same. And that God will bring us through it. God brought us through that time, my family and I. It's been a story we've been able to talk about ever since. But at the time, everything in the world came to a total and complete stop. We had no certainty of future for three days. We could only look out and see the gray shroud of ash. But God is merciful and graceful and gracious. And there's a story we tell that at the end of the third day, yellow dots appeared in the ash. The dandelions had broken through. And that underneath, God was at work, just as he is at work here in the lives of the people we encounter each day. Let's pray. Lord, bless us as we go through our day and help us when we encounter those times or those individuals for whom everything has changed and all of life doesn't make sense any longer. Help us to be the people who can let them know that through it all, you're there to walk with them and to hold them through it to a future that they don't see now, but will. Amen. Well, God bless you, and have a good day. We'll see you next week.